My name is Sarah, and sometimes I stress by yarn. Hey there, fiber friends. Welcome to My Yarn Lab. Uh, again, I'm Sarah. I'm coming at you from Medicine Hat, Alberta this time. And I just wanted to put together a quick video, which is going to be mostly um, stash acquisitions and an update. So it's acquisitions and an update of what's been going on in our lives for the past two months. So um, hopefully it's going to be sort of a bit um, storytelling of what's been going on, and I'll show you the yarn that I stress purchased along the way. So, first up, uh, my last podcast was uh, towards the end of August, and, um, or was it the beginning of September? I don't know, it's either the last week of August or the first week of September, and I recorded it from Pincher Creek, Alberta. Uh, we're in Pincher Creek, we were in Pincher Creek for Kevin's uh, training. Um, the program he's in shuffles us around rural Alberta. And uh, so to that extent, we packed up a U-Haul full of stuff and drove our family uh, over to Pincher Creek where we were supposed to be living for two months. So you can imagine that moving somewhere new with uh, twins who at the time were not even three months old yet um, requires one, a ton of stuff, and two is super stressful. So before we left, uh, literally the day before we left, I happened to be in Michael's and I saw something exciting and decided to purchase it. And that exciting thing would be Karen Cakes. So this would be sort of the funnest, um, biggest thing in commercial yarns uh, lately and they are sort of um, first of all, you rarely see commercial car yarns coming as a cake like this, and it's not a gradient, they're um, distinct color sections, but I picked up two of this lovely blue-gray color, um, thinking to potentially knit the uh, shawl that is on the ball band, or potentially um, have been percolating over a potential design project with the uh, blue-gray colorway. Um, I also picked up two of this sort of purple, brown, and green colorway, and with those began immediately knitting what is turning out to be just the ugliest thing ever, um, but I'm still knitting it anyways, so it's a stripey gradient um, across the top sort of point to point shawl uh, pattern that I'm working on, but it's hideous, and uh, I'm still knitting it anyways. I guess I should give you, oops, the ball band came off, the details on Karen Cakes. It is a 20% wool, 80% acrylic yarn. Uh, it's worsted or Aran weight, uh, number four. And you get, in 200 grams, you get 350 yards. And it's really pretty, and chances are pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and knit the pattern that is on the ball band here, because that does look like it would be sort of a really pretty, very wearable, um, easy shawl to knit. So couldn't help myself, picked up four cakes of Karen yarn. And like I said, I packed that up with a couple of works in progress projects into my knitting basket. And that's what I brought with me um, to Pincher Creek to hopefully keep my hands occupied for the just under two months that we were supposed to be living there. Um, Pincher Creek is, I think, under a thousand people. Clearly no yarn shop there. Um, we were there in the first week and Kevin was at work and I was home by myself with the boys during the day. And each day we had an outing. Um, the first day we walked down Main Street. The second day we went to the Rexall Pharmacy. The third day we went to the co-op grocery store and the fourth day we went to Walmart um, and then on Friday we walked down Main Street again because those were the four things that you could really do in Pincher Creek. Um, it's that that teeny tiny. Uh, there is interestingly enough a really cute quilting shop there so um, I don't remember what it was called but it's a super adorable quilting shop. Um, Pincher Creek for those of you who aren't sort of familiar with teeny tiny towns in Alberta is in the bottom south uh, west corner of Alberta so um, you're about 40 minutes from the border 
uh, with BC and you're about 40 minutes from the border with, I guess, Montana, I think would be the uh, US border to the south. It's really close, uh, about 20 minutes down the highway from, ooh, I'm gonna forget the name of it. It'd be Glacier National Park in the US and oh, Waterton Lakes Park here in Canada. So really beautiful camping, summertime activities area. Um, I think that I've shared some pictures from a trip that Kevin and I did to Waterton Lakes uh, back around Easter last year. Anyways, we were in Pincher Creek for a week and then um, our plans were to take a week off and fly home to Ontario for the boys to finally meet all of their family there. So uh, we took a week off, we flew out on uh, Friday night. Uh, the boys had a super long day of travel because I drove them from Pincher Creek to Calgary where we were flying out from and met Kevin there. He had been in Lethbridge the night before for a training day. Um, and then we took the red eye, the one o'clock in the morning flight, figuring that for a four hour flight and we don't know how the boys are going to travel, um, it might be better to sort of schedule that during their sleeping time anyways. And so they did amazingly well. They had a four hour flight from Calgary to Toronto, a couple hour layover at the airport in Toronto, and then another one hour flight into Sault Ste. Marie where I'm from and it was amazing for them to finally get to see and meet uh, our extended family there. Uh, my mom rented out the Italian uh, dining hall, um, event hall, where everyone in my family has had their weddings, and we had, I think, 60 guests, uh, family and friends of mine, um, to meet the boys and shower them, because being in on, uh, Alberta the whole time I was pregnant, pretty much, uh, we didn't get to do a baby shower beforehand, and um, at the shower, Kevin actually completely surprised me and he finally popped the question. It's crooked right now. So there's been a sparkly ring on my finger in some of the last couple of videos. I don't know if anyone spotted it, but uh, we got engaged and he surprised the crap out of me. I was completely speechless. I don't think I actually said yes until hours later because I just couldn't even put words together. My hands were like shaky. For the next like half an hour and everything around me just turned into like I couldn't think so it was amazing uh, it was really special that he did it in front of our family and friends um, I will try and insert the cell phone video um, that one of my good friends managed to capture of the moment uh, in here uh, the little girl who is joining in is my uh, my niece well not technically niece my cousin's daughter Penelope um, who was helping us unwrap baby presents before, before Kevin surprised me. <laughs> so that was our visit home to Sault Ste. Marie. Um, and it was an amazing visit but it was also a visit with um, a little bit of hardship for us. So I haven't really discussed it extensively, but pretty much our whole summer has been a struggle of getting the boys to eat sufficiently. Um, Dom and Alex were a month premature, and that prematurity tends to really predisposition to particularly bad acid reflux. Um, we spent more than two weeks in the NICU right after they were born working on them developing their eating skills and they had feeding tubes for that period. Um, they came home and at the beginning were doing great um, but then at about a month and a half um, they started really regressing on being willing to take anything orally. Uh, before we went home to Ontario we were actually on a schedule of feeding them about an ounce uh, every hour, hour and a half around the clock just to get them uh, to be taking sufficient quantities of food. Um, and so while we were in Ontario, one of my aunts is actually a pediatrician and we had her input, uh, not that we hadn't been following with uh, a pediatrician here in Medicine Hat uh, over the course of the summer, but it did become very clear to us that um, things just weren't sustainable, the boys weren't gaining sufficient weight, and when we got back to Alberta it was time to take some uh, more sort of active steps. 
So it was a great visit home. We also went down to Brantford, uh, where Kevin's family lives, and saw everyone there. Um, it was particularly special because, uh, obviously, the boys getting to meet everyone for the first time, meeting their great-grandmas, um, and the proposal. But there was uh, a lot of tears on my part. Um, you know, it's it's hard to be excited about everyone visiting your boys and seeing your boys when you have like an underlying uh, constant worry about them. So, um, like I said, I stress buy yarn. Some people stress eat and I stress buy yarn. So there is a beautiful yarn shop in Sault Ste. Marie called Shabby Motley and I will put the link uh, in the description below and I went there and picked up some skeins of yarn. So from Shabby Motley in Sault Ste. Marie, I picked up uh, some locally dyed yarn. Um, I don't believe that they have a website, but the yarn is, um, here's the ball band, it's called Wonderfully Made, uh, Wonderfully Made Fiber Arts. If there is a website, I will link it. Um, and this is fingering weight, 100 grams, 375 yards, so it's a bit of a heavier fingering, 75-25 uh, Superwash Merino Nylon in the mermaid colorway. And it's a lovely variegated with uh, cool blues and purple. And I picked up two matching skeins of this beautiful yarn there. I had no idea that anyone was dyeing yarn in and around Sault Ste. Marie. Um, apparently the girls behind Wonderfully Made have taught a couple of yarn dyeing classes at Shabby Motley. So I will have to keep my eyes peeled for them on social media and check them out next time I'm home in Sault Ste. Marie. So this was my stress yarn purchase uh, while we were in Ontario. Um, the plan for these two skeins is to work, I think, a two color uh, project. Um, I have a pattern in mind, but I don't remember the name of it right now. But basically I need to look for a neutral that matches the, um, the undyed sections of this yarn and work a two color uh, brioche, I think, project with these skeins and that neutral. So that was Ontario. Um, we then flew back to Alberta and the boys did great on their flight from Hamilton. No, we flew back from Pearson, from Toronto back to Calgary. And we drove back to Pincher Creek all the while my aunt was arranging for us to see a pediatrician uh, a new pediatrician in Calgary since we thought that um, the bigger city center would be a little bit more um, able to be proactive for the boys than uh, being out in the smaller community uh, of Medicine Hat. We need to go check on the boys right now. Someone's coughing. I've got Alex here with me now. Um, so we uh, went back to Pincher Creek. Kevin took some time off from work. Um, and we made phone calls and arrangements to see a pediatrician in Calgary as soon as possible. Um, when we got word that we had an appointment set up, we threw everybody in the car. Um, we woefully underpacked because I don't think we thought we would be in for quite as long of a stay as we were. And we headed to Calgary. And uh, that was on, I think, Friday, uh, September 16th. Saw the pediatrician first thing in the morning. And... Are you going to fall back asleep now? Mommy's holding you. I uh, saw the pediatrician first thing in the morning and the boys are admitted to hospital for failure to thrive uh, that afternoon. Um, so we then spent what was, I don't know, uh, uncomparable with um, our stay in the NICU, some of the longest days of my life. Um, the four of us lived in a hospital room uh, on the Peds floor at the Peter Lougheed Center in Calgary for 11 days, uh, over which time we very happily found out that there's nothing wrong with our babies. They just um, have a bit of a feeding aversion now because of the uh, bad acid reflux um, that they had, uh, which is now under control, but they have a oral feeding aversion. And for the time being, need feeding tubes to help them out. So if you see in our pictures now, we've got uh, feeding tubes for our boys. So um, we feed them as much as we can uh, orally uh, at each meal. 
and then we top them up through the tubes afterwards to make sure that they're getting sufficient intake for growth. Um, and it's a bittersweet thing because uh, obviously I would prefer that my boys didn't need feeding tubes and clearly I'm emotional about all this. Um, but it alleviated so much of the worries that we had um, and the stress of trying to get them growing and eating all the time. So, oh, his brother sounds like he's awake too. So Alex is going to play on the floor here. I'm going to go grab his brother. Hey, do you want to play in your baby gym? And uh, I'm going to show you some of the yarn that I picked up in Calgary. Um, because you can imagine that living full-time for people in a hospital room built for one pediatric patient uh, was stressful in of itself. Um, the moral of the story in Calgary is that it was hard, um, but reassuring. Lots of tests were run and everything came back uh, perfectly normal. Um, and like I said, it's hard to have feeding tubes emotionally, but it alleviates so much of the stress and worries um, that I have and it's so great to see the boys growing as much as they've been growing since the tubes have gone in um, and to really see them developing uh, and becoming such happy little boys, eh? Um, yeah, so they don't mind them overly much. Uh, they pull them out on occasion, but uh, apart from that, it's just a uh, you know, it's become a little piece of our normal here. So I'm going to go get Dominic and uh, then I will show you the yarn that I purchased while I was in Calgary. Good boy, monkey. So uh, Dominic is still asleep. So Alex is uh, playing where I can keep an eye on him and keep him entertained right here. Um, and I'm going to show you the Calgary yarn. So of course, um, as I've said, there is no yarn shop uh, yet, and there will be more on that in future videos um, here in Medicine Hat. So um, in a break from the hospital, I was able to zip out to Stash, um, which is probably my favorite local yarn shop uh, ever as of right now uh, in Calgary, where I decided that clearly I needed a sweater's worth of hmm, this is showing up really blue. It's more of a purpley kind of color. Yeah, it's totally washed out. It's a purpley gray, um, and this is uh, Ancient Arts Yarn, um, which is a Alberta dyer. Um, they have beautiful, beautiful yarns. They're fairly um, well known. Um, they're a larger scale uh, indie dye company, and this is their. Um, I guess they don't really name their bases, but it is 75% uh, superwash extra fine merino, 25% silk, fingering yarn, uh, 437 yards in 100 grams, and this is in their Roaring Twenties colorway. So I grabbed three skeins, which will be nice enough to do a um, smaller fingering weight uh, sort of drapey sweater project. So this is on the docket for me to do a very wearable sweater for myself. I also picked up some Sweet Georgia and Stash carries a lot of Sweet Georgia in-house. This is her Tough Love Sock, uh, which is an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 425 yards uh, in 115 grams. And I picked up a skein of Bison. And again, I apologize that the colors are washing out a little bit the way they are. This is a sort of, uh, it's eggplanty a little bit. It's like an eggplanty kind of color. And a skein of Beach House, which again, washed out. But these are semi-solid, um, semi-solid skeins. And the goal for this is actually to do a design. Uh, I have it percolating in my head, but it's going to be a shawl with cables uh, inspired by feeding tubes. Um, not literally, but um, it's going to be called uh, Tube Feed, and it'll be sort of very emotionally inspired by our stay in Calgary and uh, the story of my little boys here. So this will be something that I hope to get on my needles within the next couple months. I've got some Christmas knitting that needs to come first, but uh, two very squishy skeins of Tough Love Sock.
from Sweet Georgie Yarns. And I haven't knit with her yarns before, so this will be my first first Sweet Georgia. Um, and although I've purchased Ancient Art yarns before, I haven't used it for my stash yet, so um, some Canadian Canadiana yarns, uh, which seems to be a theme because the other two skeins were uh, local and Canadian as well. So these were from Stash. And then I will just briefly mention that I also went and visited my friend Sarah, who is the uh, dyer behind Sea Turtle Fiber Arts, and picked up the four skeins that uh, are currently underway in my building blocks, uh, the West Knits uh, Mystery Cal. So that was another uh, afternoon break from the hospital uh, to hang out amidst her uh, yarn dyeing goodness at her home uh, and drink her tea. Oh, are you talking? Oh, are you talking and coughing? Come up here with mommy again. Whoa, it's an Alexander. Um, yeah, to sit and chat about parenthood, uh, motherhood, she has four boys, um, and uh, and hang out amidst yarn and then dig through her colors and pick out uh, the yarn for my building blocks cow, which I am behind on. I'm just finishing up clue number two today and it's Sunday, so I need to get on to clue number three. So, um, what am I on to next? So we stayed in Calgary, like I said, for uh, 11 days in hospital. It was exhausting in ways that I cannot um, truly uh, explain. Uh, if you've ever um, had to live in hospital with your uh, ill children before, um, you can probably imagine what it's like. Um, you do need to be there around the clock, one of the two of you, because um, hospital provides medical care, they don't provide, they're not there to provide child care, right? So you need to be with your children all of the time. We did the majority of the feeding there. We were very quickly trained on how to do tube feeds, how to insert tubes. Um, I mean, both Kevin and I have a bit of a medical uh, and science background, so obviously, um, you know, we're quite capable, um, which meant that, you know, the last couple days there we were really there just for monitoring which is frustrating because we weren't really getting any um, care but they needed to see sufficient growth from the boys before we could be discharged so it was very stifling um, but necessary and overall a good thing. So when we were discharged we um, at this point needed to go back to Pincher Creek to pack up everything because Kevin had now decided to take a uh, full leave of absence um, and we'll be repeating that rotation later. Um, so we would go back to Pincher Creek, pack up our U-Haul again, and then come back to live in Medicine Hat until um, now. He goes back to work tomorrow. So we've been in Medicine Hat since the end of September and it has been the best and most refreshing month um, since the boys have been born. Um, the worries are significantly decreased. The boys have been putting on weight um, amazingly. Hey Alex, you're so big now. Um, and it's just been great. They have such uh, more exciting personalities now. Um, they play so much. They babble and chatter so much. Um, they're like bosses at holding their heads up now, although Alex is a bit half sleepy from just waking up, so he's gonna prove me wrong. But it's just been really great to be home, to be in a good routine. Um, you know, feeding tubes are part of our lives now, but they make everything... It's just, you know, it's when you're a mother, you want your babies to have full bellies, and this is giving us a way to do it. Um, that for the time being is what our boys need. So it's been a really great month uh, having Kevin home. Um, the weather has been lovely for fall. We even had a little bit of a snowy interlude. Are you eating mommy's hand? Everything goes in these boys' mouths now. It's hilarious. Um, yeah, so it's been a great month. And um, not that I needed more yarn. I recently got some in the mail, so I'm gonna grab that. So this, 
I can't really say is stress purchasing because things have been, like I said, the least stressful over the last month uh, since the boys were born. Um, so this is really just because I wanted to purchasing. But um, this is from the incredible Prairie Dye Studio. Um, there's her ball band. She's a Alberta dyer in uh, Lacombe, which is just sort of north of Red Deer. Um, I've purchased yarn from her before. I knit uh, my Cookie A socks in uh, her Anna sock base. And I picked up from her post uh, Calgary Shindig, um, Calgary Fiber Shindig shop update, a sweater's worth of her Anna sock. And this is her Farm Fresh colorway. Um, which is just absolutely gorgeous. Her Anna sock is 80% merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards in 115 grams. She also had on sale um, some MCN lace. So this is her, oh, I guess it's just called Superwash MCN lace. She doesn't have a name for this base. Um, but it's 80% Superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, 550 yards in 115 grams. And this is her overcast. Uh, colorway. I picked up one skein and she very graciously and generously sent me a message and said, I'm sending you the matching sister skein. So this is destined, I think, for a, um, a Romy, Romy Hill, Romy Knits, uh, Romy Designs. Uh, she's a beautiful lace um, shawl designer. Uh, on Ravelry, I've sort of come to really enjoy her from taking uh, Knit Stars, which I've been doing over the past two weeks. Uh, and she did a course through Knit Stars, uh, which is like an online digital yarn summit. So um, this skein, honestly, in real life, is easily one of the softest, drapiest, and most beautiful skeins uh, of yarn ever. And I can't wait to cast on for a shawl. Um, I also picked up a braid of uh, spinning fiber from her, but um, I'll grab it. You guys don't mind me getting up 500 times because you get to see more of Alexander. So this was on sale uh, in her shop as well. Again, Prairie Dye Studios. And this is um, 4.25 ounces of fine Shetland. Um, in her hyacinth uh, color so it's pink and blue and purple and I haven't really been doing uh, any spinning at all lately so I plan on spinning this up sometime in the next week or so and filming oh you've got a cough they don't have coughs the the tube does irritate their throat a little bit and that makes them a little bit coughier than usual which is no fun for anyone Hey. Hey. So, um, yeah, I picked up a skein, skein, uh, a braid of some spinning fiber. So I'm really excited to work with this and you will see a separate spinning video. Um, a lot of the comments and questions I've gotten, um, seem to be from people who are interested to see more spinning on this channel. So this will be a video in the next two weeks, I promise. Um, and I will show it to you from fiber through prep um, to finished yarn. So anyways, I hope that kind of gives you an update of how things have been uh, over the last two months here. We are settled here in Medicine Hat uh, for another month and a half um, before we rotate around through a Calgary uh, rotation and a Lethbridge rotation uh, towards December. Uh, the boys are doing awesome. Uh, they are more fun every day, and uh, they've been allowing me lots of time for knitting. Uh, this is a project that I whipped together in about a week and a half. It's uh, destined for a friend of ours in uh, Ontario. Um, if you've been following along on Instagram, you've seen pumpkin hats, you've seen um, a sock blade sock, you've seen um, obviously my building blocks towel. So lots of knitting going down. Um, as much as the boys will allow me, and uh, lots of good fun here. So anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed this sort of uh, acquisitions and updates video. Uh, you can expect to see a um, uh, update on week two, clue two of the building blocks uh, cal um, within the next day. 
because I only have about four, four or five rows left of glue to. Um, and then you can expect to see a proper podcast video, um, hopefully by the end of the week, where I will show you some FOs, um, some whips. Um, I will draw, um, draw for that uh, that prize, and uh, discuss uh, plans for uh, moving forward. Uh, that's all for now. Uh, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy uh, weaving and dyeing and crocheting. Happy experimenting with fiber because after all, this is the yarn lab. Alex, you want to say bye? Can you say bye to the camera, Alexander? Bye. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. We're going to turn the camera off now. <laughs>